The worlds of prefab construction, passive house design, and carbon sequestering building materials are coming together in really interesting ways these days. Ilka Cassidy and Steve Hessler of Holsram System are two trailblazers who are navigating this new landscape of sustainable construction. It's a landscape of precision fabrication, quick assembly on site, and the potential for cost-saving innovation. Let's join them to learn more. We are acting as the interface between the architect builder and the manufacturer of the panels. So we did all the panel design and actually timber frame design. In the model that we worked with, we were able to kind of have everything, all the different components in it. So we, we sort of started out with the timber frame design, make sure the client was on board with that. Um, it's Douglas fir timber frame design. It's all kiln dried. Um, really beautiful free heart center, beautiful timber spec. This frame went up in, in just shy of two days, which is really great. And I think it'll take about less than two days for all the wall panels and then another day or day and a half for the roof panels. Yeah, today is wall panel day on the barn and we're actually really, really excited. So these are the panels and they're all kind of staged around the barn right now. And they just started installing this morning and expecting to be done with all the wall panels today. They are panels that we call uh, XP20. And what's, what's special about them is that we actually have wood fiber insulation on the outside, uh, which is a really, really nice material. It's all natural and it's very, very, very vapor open. And that's basically the only thing that's on the outside of the wall panel. So it holds all the insulation in from the outside. And um, outboard of that, we have a um, Proclima Mento Plus WRB. What's kind of special about this panel is that we do have zip sheathing on the inside. So this is actually the structural sheathing, the air barrier and vapor retarder. So every, every one of those layers um, kind of has multiple functions. So it's really optimized towards the minimum amount of, of um, layers. And it's really, really easy to build these in the factory. It's a lot harder to build these on site. Um, I guess inboard to protect our air barrier, we have a service cavity that's already on the panel. And then outside the panel, we have the, the rain screen. So once these go up and they're all installed, it's basically the whole wall is there. All it needs is um, you know, to be connected in a good way <laughs> with our membrane leaders that have been put in place uh, before setting the panels. That little white flap that, <laughs> that uh, pulls around actually comes from the, the lower level and it's the air barrier. So it needs to be uh, connected basically from the lower level to the inside of the wall panel because that's our air barrier. So here there's a leader that actually comes from the downstairs, is wrapped over the, the sill plate and around the band board and then gets taped to the inside of the wall here to the zip sheathing. So that actually um, makes the, the air barrier or, you know, the air barrier very becomes continuous that way. And the same happens on the windows. So we'll install the windows here and the windows are gonna get taped to this membrane here. So again, that becomes a continuous air barrier. Uh, the sequencing is really, really important and you can't really miss that. So pre-planning and coordination is really crucial here because once you miss that step, it's really hard to just kind of fix it. So in this case, there's steel beams and the, the floor was set on top of it. And the air barrier is actually underneath the, the floorboards uh, because the garage is not in the envelope. So what needs to happen is that the membrane leaders needed to be put or set on top of the um, steel beams before the floor goes down so that everything can continuously be uh, connected. And uh, yeah, again, if you miss that step, then you end up taping to the steel beam and 
there's definitely going to be more cracks and, and holes in there. So there's a lot of fixing that needs to be done that you can avoid if you plan and sequence um, in the right way and then make sure that it actually uh, gets built that way. I would say that the most challenging part of it is all of the pre-engineering and thinking and making sure that when we get to it, it's going to be correct. That's where Steve and Ilka come in with giving us the detailed wall panels. They are the ones showing where the trailers go in for all the fabric terminations. And pretty much once you guys have the wall drawings put together, we pull together our team and have a conversation about buildability and what it'll take to get the process through the shop. Getting the first one up is kind of the most important for us because it sets the stage for how every other panel's gonna run through there. This gable behind us was composed of nine different panels and there are seams behind the timbers. We have some fabrics that are added in there so that we can tie it in after the fact. And we've got everything fully lagged to the timber frame at this point but we still have to go through and do all of the finalized punch out, turn all the fabrics down, seal and tape everything. And for the time being, we're temporarily stitching to the floor with just a few of the called out fasteners so that we can get the panels up and get the crane out of here. And then tomorrow we'll take the time to really dial it all in and set it where it goes. So they're, they're prepping the next panel to get installed and what's what's interesting to see here is uh, on the side of the panel you can see that little gasket there and that's going to connect the panels in an airtight way but in order to make that airtight you actually first as a prep you have to co connect the inside the, sh the zip sheathing is the air barrier so it has to be taped to the stud on the outside of the panel and then the gasket is going to be applied onto that. So that way you can, again, connect all the air barriers and um, make it all continuous. I believe every one of these walls was built on our framing bridge in the shop. Um, con controlled conditions. We're not outside in the snow. It's not in the rain and uh, comes out with a much truer product than conventional framing out in the elements. And then after the wall is completed and everything is marked off of the checklist, it gets the sticker saying that it's compliant. These stickers here, the NTA stickers are very valuable. As soon as you build these closed panels in a factory, this actually has to go through a whole third party review, just like a whole, you know, what modular buildings would have to do. So it's the same process where we as um, the architect or the um, panel designers basically have to submit drawings, architecture drawings, but also um, the panel connections and all of that and engineering calculations. And then uh, it's gonna get reviewed by NTA. And then also the factory has to go through very extensive quality assurance process and checklist so that everything kind of uh, gets built according to those guidelines. And then at the end, you get the sticker and it's basically state approved. Although machines, robots cut everything, it's still a very traditional style and, and uh, sort of construction technique. And then we were able to put a, a blanket of super high performance, but very natural panels around it. So like, it's been a blast. It's very exciting, you know? We're not putting foam around a timber frame. This is a super natural vapor, like high performance in not just thermal, but the vapor performance on this building is outrageous. So um, yeah, we feel really good about that. If you'd like more stories from this new frontier of green building, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next one here on Reimagine Buildings. Thanks for watching.